Mac or Windows? Linux. Hello world, it's Siraj. And if you're searching for a new laptop in 2019 to build any kind of software, from mobile apps to data science pipelines to websites, you've literally got thousands of options, each with a different set of specifications built for different needs. I've taken some time to sift through all the various options and give my recommendations on what the best current laptops are for three price ranges. A small budget laptop for students, a mid-range laptop for generalists, and a high-end laptop for late taxers. I mean professionals. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. Subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified of my latest videos. My picks are suited for any type of programming, web development, game development, machine learning research, mobile development, you name it. But before I break down each of my picks, let's start at the basics to give you an overhead view of what specifications should matter to you the most. First and foremost, a really good CPU or computer processing unit is crucial to have. The fundamental operation of a CPU is called an instruction. The operating system of a computer will feed the processor one instruction at a time and it performs it. Each CPU has a set of instructions that it accepts and understands, and this is called the instruction set, and it's hardwired into it. So in a single cycle, a CPU will fetch the next instruction, decode it, execute, and repeat. Simple, but still smarter than Cardi B. Whenever you're compiling some code or running some simulation software, the faster the CPU is, the faster those processes will occur for you. That means the focus should be to get the fastest processor you can afford. Next in line in terms of performance is the RAM or random access memory. Because processors are fast and hard drives are slow, to avoid long wait times, instead of having the processor read and write to the hard drive directly, RAM is a place data is temporarily stored so that reading and writing is much faster. A bare minimum you'll need is eight gigabytes of RAM, and I don't think any kind of serious programming can be done on a laptop with less than four gigs of RAM unless you're coding PHP, but that's not serious programming. It's always good to have more RAM on the laptop to efficiently run local servers, compilers, code editors, and web browsers simultaneously. In terms of storage, getting a great solid state drive is essential. It will shave minutes off of your project with all the files and apps you'll use. Hard drives are slower, so they're found mostly on cheaper laptops, and SSDs are a lot faster, which is why they're usually found on laptops priced higher than $600. Getting an SSD should be near the top of your priorities. This will give you significant performance improvements over a standard hard drive, since they use multiple flash memory chips to store data instead of a rotating disk with a magnetic coating like a hard drive would. Every operation will be a lot faster with an SSD, including booting up the OS, compiling code, launching apps, and hacking into Fortnite servers. When it comes to graphics cards, it's no secret that deep learning projects require GPUs to run state-of-the-art performance, so you'll want at least one of those, preferably from Nvidia. However, the cloud offerings nowadays are getting really good, so we'll touch on that in a bit. They let you run your models in the cloud. Now, to focus on the more human experiential aspects of a computer, like the keyboard, programming is a lot of typing, so you'll want to use one that's comfortable and durable. I can't tell you how many times I've had keys pop out of my own laptop because I type like a fiend. Also, a high resolution display is a must. Make sure it's easy on your eyes as you're gonna be spending hours staring at it. Reducing eye strain during those late night coding sessions is really important. A 4K display is kind of overkill for a laptop, especially when you consider the added costs and the battery drain that you will encounter. 1080 pixels is ideal. Lastly, if you travel a lot, having a good battery life and lightweight design are a plus. Let me start by telling you what my own configuration is. I've got a 2017 MacBook Pro that I use as my laptop for access to editing software. I like the touchpad and OS X is built on top of Unix so I can use terminal to help me code efficiently. However, I really dislike the touch bar and I'm honestly getting disillusioned in general with Apple lately. Now, unlocking it is as easy as looking at it and swiping up and you know, Let's try that again. Ho, ho, ho. 
So watch me get a new laptop soon, seriously. Probably the high-end one that I'll recommend to you later in this episode. I always run out of storage space, so I bought a Lacey external two terabyte storage device that's very durable to store all my footage and extra projects on. I also do all of my serious work on a custom built desktop computer that I built for $1,600. Inside of a Corsair 750D ATX full tower case, I've got an Intel Core i7 processor, 18 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of hard drive storage, 250 gigabytes of solid state storage, an Asus Prime Z370 motherboard, and an NVIDIA made EVGA 1080 Ti GeForce graphics card for deep learning. All of this is attached to a 27 inch Asus monitor. Additionally, NVIDIA sent me two godlike GPUs, but I gave those away to some of you because I love you. Regardless, this setup works great for me. I never have to worry about overheating. It can pretty much run everything I throw at it. Machine learning, deep learning, mobile development, gaming, and I'll create the full part list as a link if you'd like to build it yourself in the video description. It runs on Windows, but I use Bash for Windows, which is a Linux shell that runs seamlessly in a Windows environment, letting me install dependencies and perform all sorts of Unix operations, yay. When it comes to buying a desktop, it's best to just build one because A, it's way cheaper if you build it yourself, and B, it's just dope to build it. It's fun, you learn a lot about how computer hardware works. It's like an adult version of Legos. And C, if something goes wrong, you'll be much more attuned to what component is at fault. So my official desktop recommendation is to build it yourself. Do not buy a pre-made one. And if you really want OS X, just make it into a Hackintosh. Okay, here we go with the picks. If you're on a budget and or a student, the Acer Nitro 5 is the laptop for you to get, coming in at $750. Although it's a bit bulky, weighing about 5.4 pounds, the 15 inch 1080p display makes up for it, as does the keyboard. It's solid and snappy with a tactile bump in the middle of each keystroke, giving it a satisfying springy rebound. The trackpad sits a little left of center, right below the main keyboard, and the machine has a decent selection of ports like Ethernet, USB 3, and an SD card reader, also USB 2, and an audio jack port. I picked this one because it offers an exceptional processor for the price. The four-core, eight-threaded i5 Coffee Lake processor shines and performs well on most mainstream applications and games. It's also got a lower-end NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 graphics card for deep learning, and when things get hot, it's got a dual fan ventilation plus cooling system, which isn't as loud as many gaming laptops. It will be able to handle pretty much any programming task you can throw at it except for iOS development since it runs on Windows, but that's why you should build your mobile apps with Flutter, which is a single language called Dart. Dart compiles down to both iOS and Android code, and if you want to learn more about how to build Flutter apps, watch my startup series where I build Flutter apps for a range of use cases. Now, for the mid-range budget option, this is for programmers who want quality and have budget constraints, but are a little more flexible, meaning they can spend a little bit more. The new Dell XPS 15 is the one for you, coming in at about $1,350. The base price is $1,100, but my version adds the GPU for $250, to train neural networks like a boss. It's got a functional design aesthetic that's not necessarily the prettiest, but it's pretty slim and allows for you to switch out batteries easily. It's also got every port you could possibly need. Two USB 3.0 connectors, ethernet, HDMI out, and an SD card reader. It also provides a separate Thunderbolt 3 connection for plugging into high-speed devices like an external graphics card. It's pretty durable as well, resistant to bumps and extreme temperatures. I like the little fingerprint rigger to secure the laptop, and it's got a great 1080p display. Also, the keyboard offers a very good typing experience. Each key has 1.7 millimeters of travel and requires 72 grams of force, making them deeper and stronger than the keys of most business laptops. It's got a whopping 11 hours of battery life, which is impressive for its powerful Core i5 processor, 500 gigs hard drive, and 256 gigs SSD. It's also got eight gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 GPU. Now for the high-end version for professionals who have some money to spend. 
I recommend the Razer Blade coming in at $1,500 as a base model, but with upgrades can go up to $3,300. Let's just discuss the base model though. First of all, it's beautiful. Its aluminum chassis gives off a MacBook-like vibe. The $1,500 base model has a 2.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of SSD with a one terabyte hard drive. It's also got an NVIDIA GeForce, GTX 1060 GPU, and 1080p display. This notebook is slim, but it manages to fit in a surprising number of ports, including USB 3, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI, mini display port, and a headset jack. The keyboard keys aren't clunky, but they're not mushy either with 68 grams of actuation force. Definitely better than the MacBook Pro's keys. You can run pretty much any application or game on this thing, but while it's more powerful, Powerful, it sacrifices battery life, lasting up to five hours using dual fans for cooling along the way. Now, all three of my picks have onboard GPUs for deep learning applications, but just so you know, Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS now all offer really compelling free packages to try out so many of their cloud services for 12 months at a time. That means you can train models for hours for computer vision, natural language processing, and virtually any machine learning task you can imagine in their cloud data centers. What I recommend is to sign up for each service and max out the free time you get for each. And if you run out of free time on one service for the month, switch to another. That way you'll never have to pay for usage. Of course, you'll still run into paywall limits if you start doing serious AI work, but hey, that's why each of my picks have an onboard GPU for local training. So in conclusion, the best laptops for programmers are the Acer Nitro 5 for students, the new Dell XPS 15 for mid-range budgets, and the Razer Blade for professionals. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, and whatever laptop you find, use it to build wealth for yourself by empowering other people, and I promise you'll always be happy and fulfilled.